I'm Joe Riley, president of National Drug Screening. I've been helping people to learn how to do DOT urine specimen collections for over 20 years. And what I'd like to do in today's video is show you a little bit about how a DOT urine specimen collection starts out. Because a lot of times I see that it starts out wrong right from the beginning. So I'm gonna have a donor join me and we're gonna start the DOT specimen collection right from the beginning. Now, prior to starting the collection, you must have secured your restroom. And that means you have bluing agent in the toilet and in the toilet tank. You don't have any soap products or chemicals or bleaches in that restroom, any cubby holes where anybody could hide something. You've secured up those type of things, soap dispensers, towel dispensers, and you've secured the water source of the hand sink. Of course, you let the donor know that they're not gonna flush the toilet and they're not gonna wash their hands until after the collection is done. Certainly they can wash their hands and they should wash their hands before the collection, but once they provide the urine, it needs to be sealed up before they wash their hands or flush the toilet. So I've got a donor coming in in just a minute. We're gonna start a DOT urine specimen collection. In today's video, we're just gonna be doing step one of the collection, and I think you'll learn a little bit. Come on in. How are you today, sir? I'm doing very well, how about yourself? Good, are you here for your DOT drug test? That's correct. Okay, well great, I'm Joe Riley. I'm gonna be your uh, specimen collector today. Okay. And I just wanna go over a little bit about the DOT drug test that we're gonna be doing today. And we're gonna fill out some paperwork on this custody and control form. We are gonna collect your specimen in the privacy of the restroom. Okay. We're gonna seal up your specimen. We're gonna get it ready to ship to the laboratory and we're going to finish up the paperwork. Okay. Okay. Now there are instructions on the back of the form and you are welcome to read these instructions over. Uh, will I get a copy of these? You will get a copy of this to I'm, take with I'm you. I'm good. I know what we're doing, so we're good then. Okay, absolutely. Um, do you have your uh, ID with you, driver's um, license? I do. Okay, great. There you go. All righty, excellent. And that's Tom Fulmer. That's correct. Okay, Tom. Tom, I want to point out to you on this form, there is a unique specimen ID number. Okay. And that number, it starts with the 106 right there. That same number is on the specimen security seals that will go on your urine vials. We'll have two vials, an A bottle and a B bottle. Just want you to make sure that those numbers match up. Yep, looks like they do. Okay. So I'm going to start out with the administrative section of this custody and control form. And in the first section, um, we're gonna fill in, uh, make sure we have your right employer information. Um, I have Bob's Trucking, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so we're gonna put Bob's Trucking as the site location. And um, there's a medical review officer information on the form and you'll get a copy with their phone number. Okay. And uh, let's start out then with your uh, social security or employee ID number. Okay, it's 555-12-7774. Okay, and this is a DOT test and it is for a specific DOT agency. Uh, for the trucking industry, that's normally FMCSA. Does that sound familiar? Motor carrier, that's what they told me. Okay, you got it. And um, what's the reason for the test today? Uh, this was a pre-employment test. Pre-employment test, mm -hmm. okay. And we are gonna check off the drugs that we're testing for. Those drugs are THC, cocaine, PCP, opiates, and amphetamines. Okay. And I am going to fill in my collection site name and address, which is where we are right here doing the collection. That's required to be on the form. And I am also gonna fill in my collector phone number, which is also required, and also my collector fax number, which is also required. Okay, so 
pretty much kind of got the administrative section of the form filled out. You don't have any outer garments. If you did, I would be asking you to take those outer garments off. Do um, you have anything in your pockets? Could you show me that those pockets are empty? Yeah, so what you have is that right there. Okay. Um, you have a pretty thick wallet there. Could you let me just inspect the contents of that? Sure. Okay. And you can keep your wallet and your cash. Let's, let's okay. keep any, everything else outside. Okay. Uh, we're going to put that in a lockbox. And um, if you could go ahead and pick a cup. Okay. Okay. Right there. We're going to walk over to the restroom. I have a separate hand sink. You'll be able to wash your hands. Then I'm going to inspect the restroom. Mm -hmm and make sure it's still secure, which I've already secured it this morning. I'm going to open up the cup and I'm going to give you the cup. I'm going to ask you to fill it up to at least this marking right here, okay. uh, which is right above that temperature strip. And you can give plenty more if you want, but at least that much. I'm going to ask you not to wash your hands. Once you wash your hands, not to wash them again until we're all done okay. and not to flush the toilet. You'll see the toilet has a, a blue dye color in there. Um, so we'll walk over to the restroom and then uh, we'll get your urine specimen and we'll be able to move forward to get it sealed up and shipped out to the lab. All right. Sounds okay. good. All right. Well, let's walk over there now. Okay. Now, I've just showed you really how to start out a DOT urine specimen collection in what we call step one of the process. And there's five steps to the process. And in future videos, I'm going to go through steps two, three, five, and four. And remember, the DOT does count a little bit funny. We follow the steps in order all the time, steps one, two, three, five, and four. Now, really important is that your facility to do the urine specimen collection is secure. So. We're going to roll a video that is presented by the United States Department of Transportation about the 10 steps to secure your collection site to have integrity for the specimen collection process. Welcome to the U.S. Department of Transportation's video presentation about collection site security and integrity. As the director of DOT's Office of Drug and Alcohol Policy and Compliance, I want collectors and collection site managers to fully understand their important roles in making sure that transportation employees do not have an opportunity to beat their drug test. As a result of our concerns about the collection site process, we are taking some important steps to show you how to tighten up your collection procedures and collection sites. This video will make sure you understand the essential elements that will make your collection suitable for DOT testing. None of us wants truck drivers, subway operators, ship captains, pipeline controllers, bus drivers, locomotive engineers, and other safety sensitive workers to have drugs on board. The nation is counting on us to get this right, and failure simply isn't an option. Now let's take a look at the DOT's 10 steps to collection site security and integrity. These are the 10 important steps for collection site security and integrity that collectors must follow before and after every collection. One, pay careful attention to employees throughout the collection process. 2. Ensure that there is no unauthorized access to the collection areas and that undetected access, for example through a door not in view, is not possible. 3. Make sure that employees show proper picture ID. 4. Make sure employees empty pockets, remove outer garments, for example coveralls, jacket, coat or hat, leave briefcases, purses and bags behind, and wash their hands. Five. Maintain personal control of the specimen and CCF at all times during the collection. 6. 
secure any water sources or otherwise make them unavailable to employees. For example, turn off water inlet, tape handles to prevent opening faucets, secure tank lids. 7. Ensure that the water in the toilet and tank, if applicable, has bluing or coloring agent in it. Tape or otherwise secure shut any movable toilet tank top or put bluing in the tank. 8. Ensure that no soap, disinfectants, cleaning agents, or other possible adulterants are present. 9. Inspect the site to ensure that no foreign or unauthorized substances are present. 10. Secure areas and items, for example ledges, trash receptacles, paper towel holders, under sink areas, and ceiling tiles, that appear suitable for concealing contaminants. Again, the collector or collection site personnel must give special attention to these steps before and after each DOT urine specimen collection. Let's talk more about securing the collection site, but first, let's start with identifying the basic requirements for an acceptable DOT collection site. There are four basic site requirements on where a urine collection for a DOT drug test can take place. First, the site must meet the security requirements described in the 10 steps we just discussed. Second, you must have all necessary personnel, materials, equipment, facilities, and supervision to provide for the collection, temporary storage, and shipping of urine specimens to a laboratory, and a suitable clean surface for writing. Third, you will need a facility for urination. There are two types of facilities that can be used, single toilet room and multi-stall restroom. The preferred type is a single toilet room, since it is usually easier to secure. We will discuss securing requirements for each a little later. Lastly, the facility can be a restroom in a medical facility, a mobile facility, a dedicated facility, or any other location which must meet the requirements of bullets 1 through 3. The single toilet restroom is the preferred collection area. This facility is the simplest to secure. You want to ensure privacy to the utmost extent unless a direct observation collection is required. A source of water for washing hands should be provided, but it is preferred to be located external to the room where urination occurs. Also, access to the room must be limited to one entry-exit doorway. Here is a typical single toilet restroom. Please note it has not yet been secured. What can you see that the employee could use to adulterate their specimen? Are there any areas the employee could use to hide an adulterant or other materials to beat the test? Now let's look at the requirements for a multi-stall restroom. A multi-stall collection facility is authorized and the DOT would expect a monitored collection in the majority of multi-stall collections. A monitored collection is when a medical professional or the same gender collector stands in the restroom just outside of the closed stall door. Whatever style of collection is utilized, you must ensure it is secured in one of two ways. If you are conducting a monitored collection, you only need to blue the toilet and tank of the one stall you want the employee to use. In those rare cases when a monitored collection does not occur, you must ensure all water sources are secured, including urinals, and all toilet and toilet tanks have bluing agent in them. Also, only one employee in the room at a time, and access should be limited to one entry-exit doorway. Here is a typical multi-stall restroom. This restroom has not yet been secured. What can you see that the employee could use to adulterate their specimen? Are there any areas the employee could use to hide an adulterant or other materials to beat the test? When you secure the collection facility for urination, there are several things you must do to prevent adulteration or tampering of the specimen. First and foremost, you must secure all water sources by turning off water supplies or taping the handles of faucets and toilets with tamper-evident tape, a tape which cannot be removed and replaced without visible evidence that tampering has occurred. The preferred method for securing the water source is at the water shutoff valves, especially if the water can be secured outside the collection area. One alternative is to secure the shutoff valves under the sink with tamper-evident tape. 
the collector must ensure that tamper-evident tape is securely connected to the shutoff valves to prevent their use and must be quickly and easily inspected. Another alternative is for the collector to secure the faucet handles with tamper-evident tape. You must ensure that the tamper-evident tape is securely connected to the handles to prevent their use and must be quickly and easily inspected. As seen here, another method to secure the water source is to remove the handles to ensure the water cannot be turned on. If a collection area facility has an auto flush device, special care must be taken to prevent accidental flushing. The preferred method is to secure the power, and the alternate method is to place a solid colored piece of tape over the detection lens. Second, bluing is required in all toilets and urinals. If the toilet has a tank, it is required that you blue the tank as well and secure the toilet tank lid to prevent access. You must use a bluing agent. Here you can see bluing agent being added to the toilet bowl. If you are using a tank toilet, you must also blue the water in the tank as shown here. You want to ensure to use a good quantity of bluing agent to get deep blue color. The use of a bluing agent allows the collector to easily identify an employee's attempt to alter their specimen. Third, secure all soaps and dispensers located in the collection room. In this scene, you can see the removal of the soap dispenser bag. This is the simplest and preferred method. The alternative method is to secure the distribution handle from dispensing the liquid. Fourth, remove any cleaning supplies located in the collection area. Secure and or remove any items that can be used by the employee to hide adulterants. For example, trash bins, paper towel and toilet paper dispensers, and air conditioning vents. It is important to secure the paper towel and toilet paper dispensers because adulterants can be hidden inside. These are to be inspected before and after each collection. Failure of the collector to inspect the dispenser could result in the employee adulterating their specimen. Finally, as you can see, the collector is also checking the area above the light fixture. By doing so, he is able to find and remove a potential adulterant. You will also need to remove any cleaning agents located in the collection area. If these items remain in the site, they provide the employee with an opportunity to adulterate their specimen. If trash bins are not removed, adulterants can be hidden, then used for adulterating specimens. You need to be aware of any areas in the ceiling that an employee could have access to that could be used to hide adulterants or clean specimens, such as air conditioning vents, drop ceilings, or access panels. As you can see, the collector is checking the vents, and they are not removable. If the panel or vent can be removed, it will need to be secured to prevent unauthorized access. The floor drains also need to be secured. As seen here, this floor drain is not removable. If the drain cover could be removed, it would have to be secured to prevent unauthorized access. Fifth, ensure there is a single point of entry for the room and inspect the collection room before and after each collection. If you are using a collection area that has a window or has multiple doorways, you will need to secure the window and all doorways not in use during the collection process and post Do Not Enter signs. You must ensure that no one enters the collection facility either before or during the time the employee provides his or her specimen. Sixth, inspect the collection room before and after each collection.
In this demonstration, you can see the collector is taking time to carefully inspect that every item is secured and no tampering has occurred in the collection area. He first inspects the water faucet. Next, the paper towel and soap dispensers are inspected. Next, the toilet is inspected for bluing, and if a tank toilet is used, inspect the security of the tank lid or make sure a bluing agent is present in the tank. Any areas in the ceiling that have been secured are inspected. Lastly, the general area is inspected for anything out of the ordinary. If the collection facility is part of a common area, for example a medical facility or public restroom, you must ensure the collection materials are secure and only the collector, employee and observer when used have access to the collection room. This is to ensure privacy for the employee and prevent distraction of the collector. Now let's take a look at the other steps collectors must take to ensure the integrity of the collection process. In this scene, when the employee presented himself to the collector, what did the collector fail to do? Here is the correct procedure for ensuring employee integrity. When the employee approaches, you must ask the employee to show you a current picture identification. As you can see, the collector looks at both the picture ID and the employee to verify that the employee is actually the individual on the photo ID. Now the collector explains the basic collection procedures to the employee and has the employee review the instructions on the back of the CCF. Have the employee remove outer clothing. Next, ask the employee to leave any bags or briefcases with you and empty and display items in all pockets to include their wallet. The collector must also direct you to empty the contents of all of your pockets and display them to the collector to ensure there are no items present that can be used to adulterate the specimen. This inspection also applies to your wallet. Once the collector determines there are no items present that can be used to adulterate or substitute a specimen, the employee can place the items back into their pockets. The employee is allowed to keep their wallet. To safeguard the employee's belongings, the employee's personal items may be locked in a file cabinet or lockbox or a mutually agreed upon location. If there is nowhere to secure these items, the collector would need to ensure the room can be locked when not in use. The collector instructs the employee to wash and dry his or her hands under the collector's observation. The collector should inform the employee not to wash his or her hands again until after the employee provides the specimen to the collector. The employee may use soap, and if practicable, it should be a liquid or cream. A solid bar of soap gives the employee the chance to conceal soap shavings under his or her fingernails and subsequently use them to attempt to adulterate the specimen. Now, the collector either gives the employee or allows the employee to select the collection kit or collection container, if it is separate from the kit, from the available supply. With both present, either the collector or the employee then unwraps or breaks the seal of the collection container. The collector is to ensure the employee takes only the collection container into the room used for urination, while the sealed specimen bottles are to remain with the collector. Before the collector escorts the employee to the restroom, the collector must first make sure the collection containers, CCFs, any collected specimens, and the employee's belongings are secure. In this scenario, the collector does so by locking the door to the room where the collection materials and specimens are kept. After escorting the employee to the restroom and verifying that the restroom is still secure and that no one is in it, The collector now directs the employee to go into the restroom 
and instructs the employee to provide a specimen of at least 45 milliliters. The employee should be instructed not to flush the toilet and return with the specimen as soon as possible, preferably within two minutes. In a single toilet restroom, the collector is to stand outside the restroom, while in a multi-stall restroom, the DOT prefers the collector to conduct a monitor collection. Immediately after exiting the restroom, the employee hands the specimen cup to the collector, who must inspect the specimen. As you can see here, the collector checks the temperature and volume of the specimen, and checks for signs of adulteration or substitution. As seen here, the collector escorts the employee back to the locked room while holding the specimen cup in plain view of the employee. Remember, the collector and employee will maintain visual contact of the specimen to the greatest extent possible until the labels or seals are placed over the specimen bottle caps or lids. When the collector and employee return to the collection site area, they will complete the collection process. The collector should pay close attention to the employee during the entire collection process to note any conduct that clearly indicates an attempt to substitute or adulterate a specimen. The collector should never leave the employee unattended or unescorted once the collection process has begun. By doing so, the employee's chances of altering or substituting their specimen will be significantly reduced. To recap, these are the 10 important steps for maintaining DOT collection site security and integrity that collectors must follow before and after every collection. They are 1. Pay careful attention to employees throughout the collection process. Look for any suspicious behavior or attempt to adulterate the specimen. 2. Ensure that there is no unauthorized access to the collection areas and that undetected access, for example through a door not in view, is not possible. Secure any doors, windows, or other access points with tape or other mechanism to prevent entrance. 3. Make sure that employees show proper picture ID, such as a state-issued driver's license or employee badge issued by the employer. 4. Make sure employees empty pockets, remove outer garments, for example, coveralls, jacket, coat, or hat. Leave briefcases, purses, and bags behind, and wash their hands. Remember, the employee is allowed to retain his or her wallet after it has been inspected. When requested, you will provide a receipt for personal items. 5. Maintain personal control of the specimen and CCF at all times during the collection. 6. Secure any water sources or otherwise make them unavailable to employees. For example, turn off water inlet, tape handles to prevent opening faucets, secure tank lids. The preferred method is to turn off all water to the collection area. 7. Ensure that the water in the toilet and tank, if applicable, has bluing or coloring agent in it. Tape or otherwise secure shut any movable toilet tank top or put bluing in the tank. This is to prevent the water from being used to dilute the specimen. 8. Ensure that no soap, disinfectants, cleaning agents, or other possible adulterants are present. Remove or secure soap or disinfectant dispensers and cleaning agents from the collection area. 9. Inspect the site to ensure that no foreign or unauthorized substances are present. Check overhead vents, drop ceilings, or other areas that could be used to hide adulterants. 10. Secure areas and items, for example, ledges, trash receptacles, paper towel holders, under sink areas, and ceiling tiles that appear suitable for concealing contaminants. Remove trash receptacles or other items that can be removed and secure paper towel dispensers and any storage cabinets in the collection area. When you comply with these 10 steps, you communicate to employees and employers that you are following DOT procedures for ensuring collection site security. You will also be ensuring that you are maintaining the integrity of the collection process by limiting the employee's opportunity to alter or adulterate their specimen. Thanks for taking the time to view this training video, and thank you for taking the necessary steps to ensure that your collection sites and collection procedures are always and in all ways compliance with the DOT requirements you just saw. 
I and the American public are counting on you in this important effort to increase collection site security and integrity. Thank you.